In this short guide I will show you what is in my opinion the easiest way of making money in Tarkov. We scavenge on shoreline, loot hidden stashes and village area. And we should get around 612,000, 19.3 rubles per 33 minute rate on average. You could drop right time by couple of minutes if you will sprint and don't care that much about being hypnotized. One more thing before I will show you the loot roads. Let's talk about what you can find in case you want us to target farm some stuff. First, in the hidden caches, you can find all sorts of barter items, that includes some rare stuff that it's hard to find otherwise. It's random, but you will be surprised how often you will find there's something you may need. You can find in them stuff like OFZ shells, lupus beans or car batteries, so basically anything. Next loot category covers stuff you can find in the village area. I call them hideout items, those are corrugated hoses, fuel, water filters or various tools. There are also few sport bags you can loot for barter items. The last thing are some jackets that come quite handy for some key spawns. Ok, time for the bread and butter of this video, the example loot roads. There are three main scav spawns and I will cover all of them in some detail. First the most common spawn near the road to customs. It's my favorite spawn, very easy and straightforward. We focus on checking the stashes near the river. From there we go for the next three catches. First warning here, if the rate timer is around 40 minutes when you approach this area, you have to be extra careful and check the hill for potential threat. Also, if you have no backpack or a very small one, you can try to check for scav spawns on the construction area near the shore. From there we are going for the radio tower stashes cluster. Now again we have some choices. If you have small backpack and it's full now, you may consider going into the weather station and check if any scav spawning there have any upgrade. There is also GPU spawn inside the building, plus some med spawns, but that is a risky place to go, so you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it. If after checking this place you still didn't get backpack upgrade, then your last option is checking the power station. Our other choices is just going for the river crossing or checking cache that is near the resort. If it's around 25 to 30 minute mark, I usually go for the stash because it's quite safe there at that time. We are not going into the resort anyway. There is also a small building with two jackets, sport bag and some hideout spawns close by. After rooting that place I just move out from where I came and just go for the river crossing. I cross in the front of the resort. I know, it feels strange to do so like this, but trust me, it's very safe. I never encounter anybody while doing so. Reason is that most people go into resort early in the raid, and when they done looting they usually try to exit through the backside. You can move next to the wall, listening for noise from resort or just drop down and move next to the cliff. Either way, just be aware that somebody can be sniping from the roof and you may be easily seen at some point. Ok, so we move through the viewing terrace and our next stop is cache near the fence and terminal building. There are spawns there for tools, hideout items, weapon crate, dead scuff and two jackets. Next you can loot stash next to the farm, but I usually skip it. Then I check boost seat in the parking for West Wing 112 office quest key spawn that still goes for 300k at the moment. Then we go for the construction cache. Also make sure to look on bricks and wooden planks for some hideout and household items. Now again you have a choice. The most risky one is going inside cottage area that I also call villas. It's quite risky now because sun eater can spawn there, but if you want to risk it, there is a ledex spawn table in this metal box. And in the second cottage in Kirak, you can find West Wing 220 key that goes for 200k. If you want to be extra safe, then just move next to the wall and just keep looting this area. You could go for the stash and toolbox next to the canal, but it's again a little risky. From there you can go into lower village. There's plenty of loot there, but at this point I'm usually good on loot, so I just check some stuff on my way and go for the extract. The next road is a little tricky. It's when you spawn near the bunker area. After checking the first stash you have two options. You can check stash near the truck and camping spot, but it's the place where you can usually encounter some other players' calves. If you want to play it safe you can skip this stash and stash next to the suicide field and start looting from the one next to the church. If you decide to go for that option, just make sure to check some buildings for toolboxes and other containers. If you want to play for maximum survival chance, then just move next to the wall on the map edge and then just enter the upper village. When it comes to looting village, you should just check every building and don't forget about small shacks. In some of them you will find toolboxes or jackets and loose loot spawns on the floor, cardboard, benches, etc. One big drawback is you will make a lot of wood noise, but to be fair I almost never encounter anybody in this area, so it's not a big deal. If you want to be more careful then you can just crouch walk to reduce the noise. So after looting village you can just move to the cottage, go to the terminal next to the resort and just exit through road to customs. If right timer is low, like 10 minutes mark or so, then you may try to go for the lighthouse extract. 
Just be careful on Pierre because there is a chance for Sun Eater spawning there. The main reason for going for this extract is if you're looking for the West Wing 219 quest key that spawns on the broken box in the lighthouse. The last major scav spawn is near the upper village, so you just focus on looting this area. While there is loot in almost any building here, one of my favorite is this one. There are two jackets here, tools spawns and you can find electric items spawning in this drawer, so it's another good place if you're looking for GPUs. From there you can check lower village and use the exit plan I explained in the last road. Or you can just go for the swamp area, then move to the bunker crossing, hug the hills and go for the south fence exfil. To summarize, shoreline is great for hideout and many barter items, and it's almost empty, so you should survive almost every raid. Over 1 million per hour for almost no risk is a very good money in my opinion, so if you struggle in Tarkov that's your best bet to get things going. I hope you like this one, thanks for watching and see you in raids.